And I'll pass it over to Tim. When I said I, hmm. Is this there? When I said I was going to uh, hold a mic, they said, oh, a walker. I, I think there's a problem that with, with cameras. They, they, they're going to see whether we can get them to keep up. You know, I was at a, an event this summer, and uh, it was a July the 4th celebration, and uh, the U.S. government puts this on every year, the Castle of Winnipeg, and sort of wandering around and talking to people, and there was Ron Koslowski. Ron Koslowski, if anyone knows him, is the, uh, the head of uh, CME, or the Canadian Manufacturers Explorers in Winnipeg, room from Manitoba. And it was fortuitous because we looked at each other, and it was like, I got to talk to you. And we both did it at the same time. And then the next words that came out of our mouth was 3D printing. And what's really relevant about that is it's transformative. It's, it's different. The actual other, uh, I mean, it's called additive manufacturing. It's also called lights out manufacturing. And what it represents is an absolute transformation in the way things can be done. The second thing that's pretty interesting is we're doing some research and we're doing a pretty interesting piece of work right now on innovation metrics. And one of the companies that was brought to light in trying to understand how they're doing business was National Leasing. If anyone knows National Leasing, they basically lease out heavy equipment for companies that need stuff and they don't want to buy it. But the interesting part about that company is they've got a whole lot of app developers. In fact, I think they've got 20 plus applications developers, so they're actually, are they a leasing company or are they an app developer that happens to be in a leasing business? Interesting thing again. Another point was there's a great YouTube boat, and I was watching it. It was actually a, a musical production. There was a violin player from France. There was a I'm making the, the, the instrument stuff up, but I mean uh, there was a pianist from uh, from Germany. I think there was a sax player out of the United States. There was a bass player out of Canada. There was uh, I, I think a flautist out of uh, Russia. Uh, there was some uh, representation out of Africa, all around the world, and actually they simultaneously produced something. It was a, a magnificent uh, musical production. They did it in real time. They collaborated in a way that we never thought was possible five years ago or ten years ago. So three things here. One is transformative, the second one is innovative, and the third one is collaborative. And we have to start thinking about that in different ways. So. Now with the presentation, if it works, there's one there. Well, I'm with Economic Development Winnipeg. We're the economic development organization that uh, tries to put things and people and ideas and investments together for the city so we can actually grow. Uh, we, uh, we work with, the, uh, with, with a lot of folks, with the private sector, with the public sector. We're funded by the province and the city of Winnipeg. We've got a really diversified economy in Winnipeg. And I'm not going to go through all these things, but some pretty interesting things with transportation and logistics, advanced manufacturing, aerospace, energy and environment, ICT, life sciences, and so on and so forth. And our, our 10 key sectors actually represent about 41% of our overall GDP. So it approaches about $33 billion in total. We did some pretty interesting projections uh, we haven't done for us uh, in terms of growth rate by industry sector by GDP. And life sciences on a percentage basis over the next number of years is, is going to do pretty neat, pretty well. And just, I, again, I'm not going to go through the numbers. This just gives you a profile of things that we might want to expect in terms of uh, Winnipeg's economy over the next number of years. Uh, growth rate by uh, employment. A little bit different, uh, but nonetheless, some pretty steady, some pretty robust growth rates, pretty nice. Uh, again, predictable, and we're doing fine. We're a diversified economy. Got a lot of things going for us as well. Uh, we've got some pretty cool things with the Level 4 lab. Uh, we've got uh, some really, really interesting things happening with cold weather testing right now with, uh, with aircraft pinions. And we've had that happening in Winnipeg uh, through a GE standard air partnership, plus some stuff happening up north uh, with, uh, with uh, Rolls-Royce and, uh, and uh, Pratt & Whitney. If I do some, we also had some other predictions done, and if we look over the next uh, number of years from 2014 to 2021, 20, uh, uh, in our large sectors, which represent about $12 billion of our GDP, we, we can see that advanced manufacturing has got a fairly strong growth uh, trajectory. 
Uh, tourism, same kind of a thing, and transportation and logistics. So again, steady she goes, doing quite well in all those areas. The interesting thing about advanced manufacturing is that new methods, new techniques are starting to, I think, start to uh, infiltrate, if you may, the ways in which we do things. Interesting, pretty predictable, but uh, again, agribusiness, financial services, and ICT, but the cultural sector shows a really, really high level of growth over the next little while. And we've all heard about the Richard Florida stuff and how the cultural and creative industries are kind of doing the thing. We're starting to see that happen in, in Winnipeg as well. Energy, the environment, and life sciences support. Not life sciences, but life sciences support are showing some pretty relevant uh, growth trajectories over the next number of years as well. And I'm thinking that certainly in the uh, creative industries, we're going to start to see a real significant growth pattern over the next number of years. So those are little things that we can pay some attention to uh, sort of moving forward. But things are changing. We're becoming more integrated, more global, more collaborative, and certainly more complex. Sorry, I guess it's a hockey town. But it's a really great uh, saying that uh, Gretzky had, and it's, uh, understand where the puck's going to be. And hopefully this can help out a little bit. There's some real game changers, sort of on a broad basis, that we might want to pay some attention to. People are living longer. That's going to start to shape and change the way in which we need to plan for a workforce. Not only because they're staying in a workforce longer, but because of the kinds of services that are going to be quite required by our population. Smart machines. You know, the additive manufacturing thing I talked about, lights out manufacturing. Well, is it a production line worker now? Or is it somebody who's able to, is it an artist who's able to program, talk to an engineer who's able to set up a program that's going to be able to design a product that they're going to be able to enter through a particular interface with a computer that's going to tie, uh, tie into the machine that's actually going to print that particular piece, whether it be an artificial knee, literally, an aircraft part, or maybe 20 years down the road when you want to buy a car, you can customize your car by ordering it online and be able to pick up certain things, have a number of factories located in different parts of the uh, of the community and actually have it made to custom specifications. I'm going a little crazy on that one, but at the end of the day, it's changing. It's not the same as it used to be. Things like new media and the global connections are now becoming more and more relevant in the way in which we do things. So when we look at anticipated job skills, they're a little bit different maybe in some respects. We're still going to need the engineers. We're going to still need uh, 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 production line workers, but we're going to need another layer of skill set. People that are able to connect things, people that are able to think, big data, there's so much information out there right now. How do we connect those dots and how do we make sense out of it? We need people who can think and bring that down to a reality. So when we go through all this thing, the virtual collaboration thing that I talked about earlier about the music group, that's actually happening on a regular basis right now. When you look at crowdfunding, when you look at all the things that are happening right now, where actually there's going to be We Health Networks, for example, where uh, diseases or uh, genetic research can be done by collaboratives that never existed before. And that's a skill set that's going to become real. And it actually is real right now. I spoke of 3D printing. It certainly is leveraging the traditional sectors. It's art meets engineering and product development. And it's a transformational series of processes and outputs that basically are accelerating innovation. The creativity and the collaboration are all coming together. It's a whole lot different than it used to be. It used to be that agribusiness was agribusiness. A farmer can now say that they're growing a bus because of biocomposites. And in the near future, they're going to be growing planes. Not only that, but at the same time, nutraceuticals and functional foods are also a big part of that. And we're doing a whole lot of really cool things with the Richardson Center right now at the University of Manitoba. But the shape of agribusiness has changed. The cultural industries, uh, just starting with that, but it starts to get absolutely complex, intriguing, and wonderful, particularly when you look at the diversity that we've got in our workplace in, in Manitoba. E-commerce in 2013 hit over $1.2 trillion, and I'm thinking that's well, well uh, ahead of that by now. It's, it's, it's growing exponentially. So. You know, workforce development is more than training effectively for current jobs. It's trying to understand where we need to be. Talent is an asset. It's an interesting thing because talent can actually create new opportunity. 
it's not necessarily something where you fill a void, but talent can actually create things. And innovation is a very, very critical component of business growth. In fact, 78% of future business leaders say that innovation is absolutely essential for business growth. You know, the workforce diversity thing, I'm going to throw another twist at you. If businesses don't embrace a diverse workforce, they won't succeed. Because of all the other things, because of the international collaboration, because culture is really becoming embedded in the way in which we do business. Challenges moving forward, we're getting older, but that's an opportunity at the same time. Global competition for qualified labor or workforce is again getting tighter and tighter and tighter, but it's a little different now because we can actually interlink things. You know that companies right now, small and medium-sized industries, are actually connecting abroad and leveraging off each other's skill sets in order to be able to grow their companies in each jurisdiction. Sustainability of immigrant population inflows is another question because there's some, been some changes to federal legislation. But the most important thing, and it's gonna probably be the toughest thing to deal with, is we're moving from a hierarchy mindset to one of a network mindset. So where a company or, or a jurisdiction's about, it used to be about product, now it's about purpose. Where it was about control, it's now about collaboration. Where it was about secrecy, it's now about openness. And at the end of the day, a machine is turning into an ecosystem. Lots of things happening, really exciting, and you know, in a lot of the stuff we're talking about is maybe 10, 15 years away, so we need to start thinking ahead. Think about what Gretzky said 20 years ago. We gotta know where the puck's going. Thanks.